Hello, I am Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and today I want to show you my stained glass technique. Um, this just makes such a pretty card. So here are some samples. Um, many years ago, I made this card, and it was a card for my church, and it had all these openings. So this was just a sample I kept um, of the card. Uh, but I loved, uh, I had this idea of making um, a card front that looked like a stained glass image. And so on this card, on my original, um, I drew in lines with a Sharpie and used Stampin' Write markers to color in. So today I've um, done it a little bit different way, but we're going to use this kind of as an inspiration to make... Um, a stained glass card front. So on this one, um, I drew in all these lines around my stamped images. And then when I was all done, this is embossed with clear embossing powder to kind of give it that shiny look, glass look. Uh, here's one I did without doing the embossing. Uh, you certainly can uh, do it without that if you don't have embossing powder. Um, and this one I just drew lines on using a ruler after I stamped my image. And then here's the card that we're going to make in this video. So I'm going to use the um, Cheerful Daisy set and I borrowed the leaf from Petal Park because I wanted a leaf that had lines on it. And let's see what else we need. So I'm going to be using uh, Memento Black ink and Versamark. And you can use, um, on the turtle, I had used uh, Pretty Peacock. And I actually used um, Basic Gray for my lines to make the stained glass look. Um, so you just need to use uh, something that's compatible with Stampin' Blends. So for, for this card, I used Stampin' Blends. I just like using um, the light and the dark because you get a little more colors when um, you're trying to add in different, um, different colors. So uh, on this one, I used light and dark pool party and left a few white spots for the background. And then for the inside, I did a fun little um, corner. Now, this is not heat embossed, but I did throw on some Wink of Stella to make it kind of glittery. So I didn't heat emboss the inside. And I'm going to show you how I did this circle. So let's get started. I have, um, for this card, I'm gonna go with a lighter base. I have Fresh Freesia. It is um, five and a half by eight and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. Uh, I do have a basic black piece that is five and a quarter inches by four. And then I have two basic white pieces that are five inches um, by three and three fourths. So uh, this will go on the front and this will be for the inside. So let's start stamping. Now I am going to use um, the Memento on this one. So it's black and I'll be using the basic black marker. So if you're using Stampin' Write markers, um, you want to be careful if you're stamping with Memento because those can... Um, the Stampin' Write markers can pull that black ink and smear it. Um, but you can use a Sharpie when you're making your lines. But since we're using blends today, we're going to use the basic black marker. So first thing I need to do is stamp my image here. I'm going to get out my daisies, bringing my card in. So, and I'm just stamping the outlines so I can color it in. I'm not, um, I didn't stamp in the middle here. So I'm just grabbing the outline stamps for those. And I actually drew that in. 
I did use the stem for that. And on the, the next one, you'll notice on my original card, I stamped my saying right on to my card front and then made the lines around it. So we're gonna change this up a little bit and do that on this card. And I'm going to stamp this wishing you the brightest birthday. So when we're ready, I'll grab that out. And I do need a Stampin' Pierce mat for this. it's inked up really well I want a nice black line on there and you can do it um, any orientation that you like since I'm going to stamp some words up here this time I'm gonna make my flowers in a little bit different position So when I use the blends, I'm not going to be doing any blending. I'm uh, I'm just going to be using the two colors so I get kind of a variation. And then I love this little flower that goes to the side. Oh, I turned it a little bit. That's okay. I'm just going to fit this in there. I'm just going to do one stem. I think I did a stem on all of these. But I'm just going to leave those kind of hanging out. And let's go ahead and stamp our leading. and uh, make our lines around it. I'm gonna stamp this in the memento as well. If you have a stamp positioner, you can use that and um, ink this more than one time and get it really, really dark. But I'm just going to stamp it on there. So that way your greeting's already built in or you can leave it plain like this one is and just have a gorgeous card front and put um, put your greeting on the inside. Okay, so now I am going to draw in all the lines. And like I said, you can use a ruler. So on um, the original card and this card, I just used a ruler and traced to have straight lines, or you can get really fun and just freehand it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can do a lot of little pieces, or you can, you can do them a little bit wider apart. So I'm just taking the fine tip part, and I'm going to start adding in lines. So I'm drawing the middle here, and I'm not worried about if it's perfect. So I'm 
adding some middles to my flower. And then I just start dividing it up. So, um, add this down so that it's attached. And then just, and you can draw curvy lines or whatever you like. Get, have some fun with it. I'm just going up from the flower and I am going to trace around the petals so it looks like it has that um, whatever it's called the if it's lead I don't know if I want to say that but the part that holds all the pieces of glass together. I'm just going around my image. Like I said, you can, you can make the lines curved. And I'll go back in and add some extra lines in once I'm done. So I know that I, I'm going to make this like it's one piece instead of having any lines going through it. So I'll try to I'll do that bit last. want my flower to also kind of look like it's a stained it's the stained glass too that's why I'm tracing it so I'm going to do that on all of those I'm not worried about all the details I just want to do the outside edge of it So even though I stamped it in um, the Memento Black ink, I'm still tracing it so that it, it looks darker.
I'm just creating patterns with my marker. There's no uh, right or wrong. Just have some fun with it. You can make it whimsical or like I said, you can use a ruler and make it very uh, geometric. I'm just going to add in some more lines. To kind of break up the pieces. Okay, I'm going to leave that like it is. Um, oh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do the inside while we have it here. So let me show you how I did that. Let me grab out. So reminder of the inside, I just used this little one. Oh, I forgot to stamp leaves. Whoops. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself, didn't I? Let's see where I can fit those in. So this is just a little tiny leaf from the Puddle Park. I knew I was forgetting something. I guess you don't have to have leaves. Completely up to you. So let me show you how I did this circle. Really fun. A little detail here. So I used a circle from the Stylish Shapes to trace the edge So I had an enclosed space for the inside. So let me see if I have room to add a leaf here somewhere. We want some green on there. I can't believe I forgot my leaf. <laughs> it's okay. We'll figure it out. I really wanted it down here. Let's just add it in right there. And we'll add, let's see, I think I had a whole bunch on there, but that's okay. We'll just fit it in. I made them a little closer than I did. Forgot to put my mat under there too. That's okay. Mm. 
that works. Okay, so then for this one, I'm going to, let's see, I stamped my flower first. And this just so you can see what I did here. my flower. My stem. And let's make sure I do a leaf on the inside here. And now we're going to use that black marker again. I'm going to make that flower metal. And you can make it uh, however you like. You can, I'm making mine kind of like a cone flower would look. And then I'm just going to take my circle die and I think I made this out a little further than the last one that's okay and I'm going to trace oops don't move your die using it as a guide. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to add in some lines to make it look like a bunch of little pieces. So you can buy the the black the basic black stamp and rate marker on its own. It's the only one that's sold separately. All the rest are in a color family. So on that one, I didn't put quite as many lines. Now we're gonna color. So I am using Stampin' Blends. I'm in a little bit of a scrap paper here. Um, and I'm just using, let's see, I have Pool Party for my background. So I'm using light and dark, and then I'm gonna leave some white spaces. Send for reference. And then I have, um, for my flower metals, I have um, Blackberry Bliss. For my flower, I have Fresh Freesia, and my leaves are Lemon Lime Twist. So then you just start coloring in. And you can do the light and the dark to kind of add some variation. I'm not blending, so don't worry about doing that. I'm just using the light and dark so I have a little bit um, uh, more colors. That's what I'm looking for, more colors. And 
I'm doing one side of the petal light and one dark. So I get just a little variation there. You don't have to do that. You can just color it one color if that's what you want to do. I am using the brush tip. I know when you see me coloring, that's, you don't always see me using that end. Um, it does lay down a lot more color than the bullet tip nib part. Um, but I want, I'm just trying to add color quickly to this and I feel like it's the easiest way. Now for the middles, I just did um, this is light Blackberry Bliss. the dark to add some some dots And then um, the mind twist. And the whole reason why I picked this leaf is because it has little lines in it. So I can make it look like it's part of the stained glass just by how the, the stamp is designed. So it's okay to mix and match. You could stamp the leaf that's in this set if you don't have a leaf that has these line details. That would be okay. And then you could just add some black lines on it to make it look like it has little glass pieces. Oh, I forgot to color this one. <laughs> that's right. I'll come back to it. So for the back, I just used Pool Party and I left a few areas white. So um, it's up to you which one you wanna leave white. If you wanna leave your greeting uh, white, you can. But I just start going in and adding it. This is dark. And I'm, I'm not worried about if it's perfect, I just want to add the color. And it's okay if you do um, side by side. Because you drew the black lines, it still looks like it's separated into different pieces. Oh, I forgot to color 
my stem. My stem does have a little area on it. It can be colored. Accidentally. You could also draw in a stem if you want it to be a little wider. that marker break for a second and use the light and it's meant to look like stained glass that so has a little bit of variation to it so um, don't worry about if it looks perfect it's gonna look great when you're all done I don't remember which pieces I want to leave white. I think I am going to leave this. I'm going to leave this white where the greeting is. You can color over it. You could, um, on my original, I put a line. Uh, around some of the letters and um, made them two different colors. So you certainly can do that too. The best part about these blends are um, they will dry smooth and look really nice when you're all done throwing this color on there. Leave those white. 
and you don't have to leave um, white. Some, some of my cards I did and some I didn't. So I just thought it would look nice on the background. Let's see. I think that's good. Okay, now let's color this one. Come back in my colors for my flowers. just think this is such a fun look. I really love stained glass windows. And so I just really um, wanted something different for my cards. And it had been such a long time since I've done this. I made that original card um, many, many, many years ago. So I thought it would be fun and different to share this. I'm coloring this just like I did on the front. didn't leave any white on this one so it's completely up to you have some fun with it you can make a ton of little spaces to color or you can um, make it bigger bigger pieces I think really the idea is to just have fun and it makes a really unique card. with a few white pieces on that one. Change it up a little bit. Okay, so there's our two pieces. This one I am not going to use the embossing powder on. So let me get all this out of the way so we can get messy. So now that that's done, I'm going to bring in um, clear embossing powder. And let's see, let's use this scrap piece to put my ink on. So I am going to use Versamark, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up, and I'm just going to take the pad right to my paper, and I'm just pressing down. Now, it will get loud when I heat this, so if 
you're sensitive, you may want to turn the sound down. Um, because I cannot help how loud that is. Okay, so I just went over it. You see it's really shiny, it's wet. Um, now I'm going to bring in my embossing stuff here. Put this in my tray. I'm going to move this. I want to get powder on that. And it does get everywhere. This is the messy part, but it's so pretty. Like I said, if you don't um, like to emboss, you could use Wink of Stella on this, or you can just uh, leave it as is. I think it's pretty even without the embossing. The embossing just gives that really shiny, fun look. It makes it look more like glass. So I'm just sprinkling my embossing powder over the whole thing. And we're actually going to emboss it several times. So I'm just trying to pick it up here and not get fingerprints all over it. But that's okay if you do. You're going to emboss it several times, so don't worry. I'm just tapping off the excess. Oops. If you touch it like I did, you can just pick up a little bit and tap it down. So it does get everywhere. No matter how hard I try, it gets everywhere. I'm going to move this away while I heat it because I do not want that to get heated. Just using, I have the tools. These are available from Stampin' Up! The tray and um, it has little tweezers and a little brush. I'll show you. I'm going to use that. Okay, here it goes. Ready? Hopefully you can see the magic happen. So it looks like a, a matte finish right now. Let me pull that up so you can see it. So it, it just looks like it has a matte powder finish and it's going to uh, melt when we add the heat to it. So you can kind of see it when it starts turning. Hopefully I'll hold it up when I'm all done. Okay, now I'm going to check my image. So careful because it can be hot. Um, so I can see right here, I don't know if you can see that on camera, there's a little spot that isn't melted. And when you hold it up and, sh and move it in the light, you can really tell if you missed any spots. So I'm just going to heat this area again. Now for this type of card, I like to do this process twice. Oops. 
So I'm just lifting up and looking at it. I'm going to let this cool for just a second. And so you have lots of options here. Um, like I said, you can do um, no embossing powder. So here's one I did with none. So this um, card actually had three layers and it does kind of give um, just a different look. It has a different feel to it as you layer that embossing powder over and over. Um, but for this card, I just did two and that's what I'm gonna do in the video. So I'm gonna let this cool for a second and then I'm gonna add ink all over it again and um, powder. So I'm gonna bring in this piece. This has powder on it, so I wanna be careful not to get it everywhere. It is on this surface too. And it will curl. See how my paper is curling? It will, will curl. You can just um, manipulate that and kind of bend it back. Or you can heat it from the back. Um, something I like to do if I'm going to make a ton of these cards, I like to take my clear blocks and lay them clean and lay them on top. And it helps them just to cool off and flatten back out. Um, but if you use a strong adhesive to adhere it to your front, it will be okay. So I'm just going to take that ink pad, the Versamark pad again, and I'm just going to go all over that. I'm not worried about if it's exactly perfect because um, any spots that you may have um, not got it on there again, and so there's not a second layer, it's just going to create some variation um, in your card. So get that out of the way and we're going to put this right here and we're just going to um, scoop up that powder and get it on the card. Try to keep it in the tray. <laughs> it's a little bit diff difficult when you're doing your whole sheet, but it is such a fun look, fun to do. I'm just using a spoon to grab it, try to get it on there faster. Just wanna make sure all my ink that I put down gets powder on it. So usually I wait in between, a little bit between these two phases and I do lay a block onto it so that it's, um, it's flat. Okay, I think I got it covered. clean that up in a minute. All you have to do is I'll show you that that's a great um, tool to have. Right, I'm gonna put this okay. All right, here we go with the heat tool again. hope that magic is coming through on camera. I just love watching it change from a matte finish to shiny and and you I am using clear.
going to check my image here and make sure that I got it all heated. It is easy to miss a spot. Sometimes you think you think a spot um, heated and it didn't. So that's that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool for a second. Move my heat thing before I touch the end of it and burn myself. And I'm just kind of um, wiping this powder away. It's, it tends to get everywhere. And let me show you how I put it back together. So this is kind of cool. So what I'm going to do, it's cooled off. So I'm just going to put my block on top of it while I do my cleanup. So I like to keep my powders in this. Before we had these trays back, I just used my powder in here. Um, and I like to keep a spoon with it. So this end turns off here. And then you can dump your powder right back into the container. So I believe Stampin' Up! Now you have a metallic set that has three colors in it and you have the clear, um, the, the black and the white as a, a set. So this is something I really like having. I, I often forget to use it, um, but this is a great, great technique. Not perfect, but it'll work. And then this just screws back on. I recommend really wiping it out if you're going from um, powder to powder. I've been using clear in it, so, um, but if I was going to switch to white, I would really take something and wipe that out so that uh, clear is not going to hurt anything if it gets into your white or, it, I mean, it will, um, it will be mixed and have um, clear in there, but um, if you had black in there, then that could be pretty bad <laughs> to get those mixed. Okay, so I'm all done with that part. Um, and I want that to kind of sit there for a minute uh, before I adhere it to this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and put the inside piece together here. So this card, it comes together kind of quick um, for such a detailed card with a little um, technique here. It's not too bad. But like I said, you can, um, if you want to make a bunch of these cards, you can do all your layers and do it um, in steps so that you're doing all your drawing and coloring and then um, all your embossing at one time. And you don't have to do the heat embossing. I'm going to show you Wink Estella on top of this one uh, that for the inside. And I really, um, I really think this gives a great look too. So if you're not a fan of the heat embossing, no worries. You can do it this way. And I'm just going to go over top. You could do this before you adhere it down if you want. I'm just going over top with that glitter now. Um, this is the one Stampin' Up! Cell, so it's it's just uh, clear. So all those fun colors are shining through. Make sure I cover all the parts. So that's the glittery look. And it does work very well if you don't like the heat embossing. Okay, so now um, it is curled a little bit, but that's okay. You just want to make sure you're using a strong adhesive. And by strong, I mean um, the Seal Plus or the liquid or tear and tape. 
Um, I still get nervous <laughs> with tear and tape. So I'm just gonna use liquid. And I did liquid glue in all of my cards. Um, so it works really well. It's just the longer you let this go under the block, the, the flatter it's going to be. But for time's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with it. And I, I wanted to use the black just because that way it's like it has an edge. But I am going to show you on my original what I did. Um, if you don't have black paper or you don't want to um, add, maybe you did a bigger piece. Um, I'm going to put that down on there. Just grab a couple blocks and let that sit for a second. Um, on my original here, I took my black marker and I just went around my edge to make it look like the frame of the stained glass picture. So you can do that as well. So use what you have um, to try this technique. Okay, so now I'm going to adhere this to the front. And I'm not using dimensionals. I am um, just adhering it flat because I don't want it to pull apart and curl up. Um, if you wanted to add some dimension to this, you could use um, three or four pieces of the black cardstock and lift it up that way. I did not try the foam squares. I just don't know if it'll um, stay adhered down. This is, I mean, you made essentially a piece of uh, plastic. <laughs> um, the whole front of your card has uh, embossing on it, so it doesn't want to lay flat. So I'm just going to put this here like this for a second. And... give it time for that glue to set. Uh, so if you are new to my YouTube um, channel, please subscribe and give my video a thumbs up. And if you're rocking, watching on Facebook, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you need any um, help with this, feel free to leave me a comment or shoot me a message. And there's our card. I just love how shiny it is. It's just so fun. And then our inside's ready to go for our message. So I wasn't sure if I would like the lighter base or the darker base, so I will leave that up to you. Let me know in the comments which one your favorite is. And again, let me bring in my other samples here. So. Um, I used, for our card today, I used Cheerful Daisies and Petal Park for my uh, images. I used Memento Black Ink for my stamping. And then the basic black stamp and write marker to draw in all my lines and trace around my images. Um, on this card, I used the Sea Turtle. Let's see, what is that called? The, oh, Sea Turtle. And um, this happy birthday is from Sentimental Park. And this one, um, I used the uh, Seaside Bay stamp set. Again, I used my small circle die to trace that in and, and draw some fun lines. And I hope that you will look at the sets that you own and see what sets you can um, do this technique with. Uh, if you need any Stampin' Up! products, feel free to jump over to bethroy.stampinup.net and click on the Shop Now button and you can go to my Stampin' Up! store. Enjoy this technique, have fun, and let me know in the comments if you give it a try. Have a great day!